enjoying it. It's a fun, quick read, fun, quick horror. I had no desire to pick it up. Hello, everyone. <laughs> So, in this vlog, I'm so excited. I'm actually quite nervous for this though. Basically, a couple years ago, years and years and years and years and years ago, right back at the start of my channel, I did reading the highest rated books on my TBR. And I've always meant to do reading the lowest rated books on my TBR, but I've always put it off. <laughs> you are such a bunch of cowards. You are such a bunch of cowards. I think just out of fear and just out of you know, procrastinating. <laughs> I just put the video off, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna read the lowest rated books on my own TBR this video. <laughs> I'm excited. I actually got more excited after I, I did a whole video reacting, this was like probably a year ago now, reacting to the lowest rated books that I've read. And there were quite a few on that list that I'd really loved. Like Catherine House, for example, is one that springs to mind, was at the time in like the 10 lowest rated books that I'd ever read. And I love Catherine House. That's a five star. It was a top 10 book for me the year that I read it. So I feel like we could find a top 10 book here because I do sometimes go against the mold. Maybe I'm just so different. I'm just so different. <laughs> What's going to be fun, we're going to read the book and then something I thought would be fun is that we'll maybe read a few of the reviews afterwards to see what other people were thinking. I don't usually do that with the books I read, but because these are low rated, I would love to see why they're low rated. And then regardless of whether I like the book or not, we'll come up with probably three reasons as to why I can understand it's low rating, even if I liked it. I mean, that would be easy to come up with if I didn't like it. But if I, um, if I did, we'll kind of come up with some ideas as to why it's low rated. So I've got my Goodreads open in front of me, my own TBR shelf, 226 books on here. I ain't got a problem or anything. <laughs> Stop it, get some help. I remember, I remember when I hit like 80 books on my TBR, like 100, I was like, this is a good number to stick at. Or like when I hit 100, I was ashamed. I was like, 100 bucks? And now I'm like, yeah, it's 226. Like, just, everyone live with it. Okay, what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna click average rating and then I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna see what it is. Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> okay, I've been having a problem with my edition of Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> I wondered if this would happen. Where like, however I sort my list, where it's like by number of ratings, because sometimes I like to see that kind of stuff, or date added to my TBR. Like when I manually myself sort it, Pride and Prejudice comes up first. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. But it has an average rating of 4.28. So it's not gonna be that. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. The Perishing by Natasha Dion, I think is how I say her name. 2.84. <laughs> that could be the lowest rated book I've ever read. Hang on. Like that's, I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Let me go to my books and my read. Okay, I've read something with a 2.80. I read this for journalism, but it has five ratings. So that's not really legit, but Fucking hell, Rebel City of Indra by Kendall Kai Jenner has a 2.96. So this, a 2.84. Okay, we're reading that. I don't know too much about it other than it's, uh, I think, set in 1920s, New York, and following this black time traveler. I think we go in the future as well. I'm gonna be intrigued to read that. Interesting, okay, next one. Oh, okay, The Woods Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins with a 3.09, interesting. I know this is like a slasher, horror, YA, uh, where these two best friends go on this hike together and then horror stuff starts occurring, I think is the entire premise really. And I know that Stephanie Perkins horror, I'm not particularly surprised to see this on here because I know that her horror has been very mixed, <laughs> mixed bag. I wonder what the rating for this someone in your house is. That was her first horror. I don't think either of them have been particularly popular. That's got a 3.42, so it's got a higher rating than The Woods Always Watching. Um, but compared to like her, you know, Anna and French Kiss back in the day with a 3.99, her horror isn't doing it for the girlies. So I'm excited to see what I think about this because I have wanting to been wanting to read these. I feel like this is the kind of thing I could enjoy more than the general population because I like kind of crazy, ridiculous, over the top plots. Bus, club, another club, another club, plane, 
next place. Whereas I think some people are looking for more realism in their books. I don't mind if it's a bit ridiculous and I feel like that's what I've kind of heard on the grapevine. And then what is our third one? Oh shit. <laughs> Witches steeped in gold, yeah. I could have probably predicted this would be on here too. This was one of my most anticipated releases. When I when I was like, when it was coming out, before it was coming out, I was so excited. I like followed the author on Twitter. I was like so hyped. And then it hasn't had the best reviews. I just noticed this African inspired fantasy with witches. Now I have, I will say, I've been loving a lot of witch books lately. I loved the Once and Future Witches last year. I really enjoyed the Raven series. I've really been enjoying witchy vibes. Me and the witch Witches, you know, I feel like I could enter my witch era, <laughs> but I have been very scared to read this because I was so excited for it and then it hasn't had good reviews. So anyway, those are the three books we're going to be reading. I wonder what else there was. Like a Sister, I didn't know that had a low review. <gasps> Switch by A.S. King, I would have loved to read that. I know, A.S. King's a polarizing figure. A.S. King's interesting, we're not obviously going to be reading this. Uh, Star Daughter, I could have, Monogram Murders. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, A.S. King I have an interesting relationship with, where I either give her books five stars, and they're some of my favorite book I've read that year, up there, top 10, or I give them like a two star. Yeah, please ignore Rio Deets, I gave five stars. Also Passengers, I think, was a 2.5. Reality Boy was a 2.5, and Dig was a five. So we have a very mixed relationship. So I don't know which of those Switch would fall under. I would have loved if Switch had been a bit lower rated, and we could have ended up reading that, because I'm a bit scared of which is Steeped in gold. I'd rather read Switch, but we're gonna read Witch of Steeped in Gold. So I don't know which of these I'm gonna start with, but I will see you when I start the first book. Book one. I chose The Woods Always Watching because it's a quick read. And also it's the book that had already been on TBL Cluedo, so I was kind of like, I'd already mentally prepared myself. <laughs> to read it. Sometimes I have to like really work myself up to being like, okay, I'm going to read this book next. Do you know what I mean? Like I have to get myself, I have to like feel the fantasy. When it's like a surprise video, I have to, yeah, mentally prepare myself <laughs> for reading that book. And I'm halfway through and I'm actually really enjoying this. Don't be shocked. You're shocked? You're shocked? It's not a five star by any means, but this is like a four star for me at the moment. I'm actually enjoying it and it's got, I mean, I was gonna say it's got bad reviews, but I mean, that's every book in this video. That's the whole point. So basically we've got best friends, Nina and Josie, who are going away to university, but before they do so, they are going on this hike together. You're like, girl, girl. They're like woefully unprepared. They don't really understand how hiking, camping works. And the whole first half has been the tension building of us obviously knowing something terrible is gonna happen. And also them kind of negotiating the issues that they're feeling, that the hurt that they're feeling about this kind of university, them being apart, you know, that happening, their relationship kind of um, suffering in the first half. And then something literally just happened like 10 pages ago, my jaw dropped. <laughs> Gagatrandra. I went, I went, I was like that. <laughs> I hate it. I forgot, I'm not great with like gruesome horror. I kind of like wanted to look away and I was like, hang on, I can't look away and read the book. But I'm really enjoying it. I feel like the writing's fine. You know, it's not like, you know, it's not like a work of art. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like the tension has been built very well. The pacing's worked well. It's a nice short book. I don't think it needs to be much longer. The first half has definitely been the calm before the storm and you know that throughout the first half, but I'm ready for the second half to go bonkers. Now, if it doesn't go bonkers, will I be a bit disappointed? Yeah. Basically in the first half, the girls were together, but in the second half, it seems like they're gonna be separated pretty much for the second half. And um, I just feel very tense. I feel very into the book. I feel very like caught up in it all. So I'm enjoying it. Like it's, I don't have much to say about it. It's not a particularly, you know, insightful book, <laughs> but I like the discussions around their relationship. I think, I think having been on the um, easy hike that was Pulpit Rock <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I like can kind of picture the stakes a lot better um, in this situation. I mean, Pulpit Rock, I was literally fearing for my life. I was like, I'm about to fall down and crack my head open. It was a real possibility. It was really, it was really, really a possibility. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes. The synopsis doesn't say what has happened at the halfway point, so I'm gonna try and like 
keep it shtim, but I'm enjoying it. It's a fun, quick read, fun, quick horror. And I feel like I'm participating in Summerween, which is all I wanted. I wanted to do Summerween properly, but having been ill last week, I was like, I'm just not up for it. And <laughs> So this is my Summerween participation and watching all the vlogs. So yeah, I'm home alone this evening, which I don't know how much reading of this I'll actually get done, but I'm gonna order some food in, which I never do. Obviously when we were at uni a lot, Tom and I would get takeaway a lot, and we live where we live now, back at home, specifically my house. His house not so much, but my house, like, girl, there's not a lot of, like, food you can order. I can't order McDonald's. I can't order, what else would we used to order a lot? Like Pizza Hut. Like I can't order a lot of what I used to would have ordered once upon a time. So I think I'm going to get some starters from Prezzo, which I know sounds bougie. If you're in the UK, Prezzo's like a restaurant, but there's like, the only fast food I can get is KFC and I don't like KFC. So I think I'm going to order that and some sweet stuff because I'm home alone and I could not be bothered to cook. I just can't. And we'll see if I read it this tonight. I don't know if I will, but if not, I will speak to you soon. I'm very intrigued to see where it's gonna go. Okay, so for dinner, I got some of the bruschetta from Prezzo and crispy mozzarella. I'm obsessed with their bruschetta. It's literally so good. And then I'm not gonna have both of these now, obviously, but I got <laughs> a Biscoff cookie cone and a cornflake brownie, which I've already had the corner of, and it's really good, so. I love my life. Okay. <laughs> this is a near impossible book to discuss. I actually can't even speak to you about it. There's a lot to tackle here. First things first, this is a book of two halves, like I was kind of predicting. The first half is kind of chill, ominous. You don't really know which direction the book's gonna go. Is it gonna be like supernatural horror? Is it gonna be like slashery? Don't really know the direction it's gonna go in. Halfway it flips on you. It flips on you and it goes crazy. The book goes crazy. I couldn't read section of this. I felt so sick. Like it's some of the most graphic depictions of gore that I've read in a long time, especially in a YA book. I am in two minds about this book because I actually enjoyed the reading experience of it. I enjoyed reading it, but it's taken me a week to read a 200 page book. I'm not one of those people that forgive and forget. I'm one of those people that fucking take score. I had no desire to pick it up. Do you know what I mean? When I wasn't reading it, I didn't want, like I didn't feel a need to read it. I wasn't pushed to read it. I wasn't excited to read it. But I read the last 80-ish pages this morning in one go and I enjoyed it. So like, how do I <laughs> rate that? I feel like I'm gonna give it a four star in terms of enjoyment, but demote it to a 3.5 because I, yeah, didn't want to pick it up, but I I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the friendship that the girls had. The writing was solid. The writing is like solid writing. It's good. Like it, the pacing is good. Um, the characters are good. The gore is a lot. Like it's a lot. I would have to like put it down for a couple seconds or a minute and then pick it back up. And it takes a lot for a book to do that to me. I mean, I will say it, it's ridiculous. Like. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Like, especially the ending, the last twist, girl. <laughs> I actually laughed out loud. I, it was that. It was like when a book is so ridiculous and nonsensical and just like, girl, come on. Like, I mean, like, it's revented into fantasy territory here. Like, this is not happening. Usually that's the sign of a bad book when I laugh out loud at its sheer stupidity, but I actually kind of bought into it in that kind of slasheriness, like ridiculousness. I liked that. So I don't think this deserves to be one of the lowest rated books on my TBR. I'm gonna say it. I've read far worse books than this and I think this had like a 3.06 average rating and I've read so many worse books than this that um, should be lower in my opinion. But I can understand why people don't like it. So let's quickly read a few of the reviews. Let's read some of the lower rated reviews. So it's pretty much a lot of three stars. Oh, it's got a 3.09 average rating. Um, a lot of three stars is what has given it this rating. Main issue is that it took a while to get into it and nothing happens for the first 100 pages or so. That is true. But I think it builds the suspense quite well. Two main characters were hit times, but they got on my nerves. I think they should have been more developed. Certain aspects of the plot, especially, and <laughs> were unrealistic. I mean, it's beyond unrealistic. One star, jeez Louise. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very harsh. I don't think it deserves a one star. I don't think it's that bad. Nothing happens in the book. When something does happen, it's so unbelievable. No motivational backstory is ever given for the villains. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true, but like, 
I think that can go both ways. I think you can be like, bitch, why are you giving me a backstory? Because without spoiling anything, for like the villain character aura part of the story, some backstory is tempted to be given, but I think when you give, it, given, a given, giving a backstory to the malevolent force in your story, whatever form that takes, it can be seen as why are you doing that? Do you, does the author want us to sympathize with this? evil, evil thing, you know? Um, and then other readers are gonna be like, no, I wanna understand their motivations more, or like why they're doing what they do. So it's a difficult line to tread. I think I don't need it all the time. Like things can just be shitty. People can be shitty. People can be bad people. <laughs> I don't think you need necessarily a backstory, but I'm not gonna like, if I get one, I'm not gonna critique it either. I didn't feel like that. So I guess my three reasons as to why I think that this book is understandably rated low, even though I enjoyed it. Oh, this is fun. Um, number one, I think given that Stephanie Perkins before this wrote romance, and that might be where some of her audience are coming from and they're kind of pivoting, and the fact that it's also YA, I think it could be too gory for some people. Understandably, there were times for me where I was like, holy shit, <laughs> like this is a lot. <laughs> it verged on adult descriptions for me of what was happening. Number two, I think that split book where it's like slow, and then ridiculous. I can understand why that wouldn't be for some people. I think I actually quite enjoyed it, but you know, all of these critiques could be part of the reason why it, I didn't really feel incentivized to pick it up. Once I did pick it up, I enjoyed it, but I didn't feel incentivized. And what else? We need a third one. The more I think about <laughs> how unrealistic a lot of this was. It's not realistic. It's just not realistic. Unrealistic in terms of like human incapability of doing certain things, of like living past something or like being able to do stuff when other stuff has happened to you. Like it was just unrealistic. It's just not gonna happen. But I don't know, it's a slasher guys. It's a slasher. So like, it's gonna be a bit ridiculous and over the top and like people are gonna find this like superhuman strength from somewhere. But I guess, yeah, it's unrealistic. Uh, the ending did get me. The ending did make me laugh. <laughs> I don't think it was supposed to. So we'll go with that as our three. But yeah, I don't think this deserves to be one of the lowest rated books on my TBR. I've read far worse and I actually think I might try There's Someone Inside Your House. I actually might. I think I like this kind of slasheriness, but if I do pick that one up and it takes me a while to get through it, then like get rid, because they're 200 pages long. Like it should be a book I read in a day and I read it in a week. So that is a drawback of it. Anyway, let's get into our second book. Right, book two, everyone. <laughs> the lowest rated book I've ever read. Like, this is it. I know there's one book there, but it's been rated by like four people and someone was salty. Probably like the ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend of the writer and gave him one star or some shit. So this is really the lowest rated book I've ever read. And I don't think it deserves to be, but I don't know how much I'm enjoying it. <laughs> So I think I've pitched this before as like a um, uh, time traveler, but it's not really. It's about an immortal person who wakes up in New York, uh, not New York. I said New York for the first time, LA, wakes up in LA um, in the 1930s, doesn't remember who they are. And we're kind of hearing from them and then them, I think in, are we gonna say in the future 2102 or 2102? Are we gonna say 21? Cause we say 2000 now, 2022. Are we gonna say 2102 or 2102? Anyways. I'm here to investigate. We're hearing from them as well, I think, like aged up in the future. I mean, she's a weird book. She's a weird girl, but like not weird in a fun way. <laughs> It's kind of literary fiction. It's kind of fabulism. It's kind of historical fiction. It's kind of a lot. I don't know if it knows what it's trying to do. The writing I think is good. It reminds me of some like weirder literary fiction I've read before. It's in that kind of vein. I think the writing is written well. The first 60 pages of this, I would say I was really enjoying it. I really liked the character. I feel like we're very like, moments of the book, I think it might even be that she speaks to us directly or at least it feels that way. Um, kind of addressing us as the audience. So you feel very close to her. Like we're kind of busy mates. <laughs> and the book feels a lot like a love letter to the history of LA to me and the eras. And I feel like we're just gonna get that even more kind of like following 
the uh, the past character through history and major events that happen. But I'm kind of, there's moments where I'm a bit confused. I'm a little bit confused and I don't really understand what's going on. And it just breaks the flow of reading it, right? There's moments that kind of get a bit philosophical or like meaning of life and like, or she'll be somewhere and then she'll believe that she's somewhere else. And there's kind of like, made up scenario and that scenario is very like dreamlike and difficult to follow and it just breaks the flow of me enjoying the book you've ruined it you know i'm halfway through by the way don't think i said that i'm 150 pages in it is a slow read you have to really pay attention to what's being said it's not a quick easy breezy beautiful cover girl read i don't think it's the worst book i've ever read though there's many worse books <laughs> there's many books out there that for me are a lot more poorly written and um just shit than this i don't think it's shit i think it's trying to do a lot i think it's a very ambitious book i think it's like wanting to really achieve a literary feat and i don't know if i know what that literary feat is <laughs> I want to try and finish it tonight though. I want to try and read the next 150 pages this evening. It's a very difficult book to discuss and I really don't know how I feel about it. I can perhaps see what it has got the low rating, but I don't think it deserves to be the lowest rated book I've ever read. finish the perishing this book is near impossible to talk about i don't know what i think of it i still don't i oh, i'm confused i'm confused i'm confused 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 it reminds me of house of leaves and that there's some aspects of it that are like one star there's some aspects of it that are five star not many that are five star quite a bit that are four star yeah i found it very difficult to focus at points in this book it's very confusing but i really liked oh my god <laughs> By the way, ah, ah. I haven't worn my retainer for many years, <laughs> properly, and I've been wearing it again lately, and my teeth are being uprooted, and I'm in so much pain, particularly at the front here, hurting, talking hurts. <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the writing, I think is really good writing. I think this is really clever clever writing. It's not really a magical realism, fabulism -y book. It's more a historical fiction about black communities and the how important they are, but the historical erasure and dismantling of them. Um, it's about ingrained trauma within black communities, the kind of legacy of trauma that many people suffer from. It's got a lot of really interesting points that it tries to make. And I think it was written very well in terms of the quality of the writing. I think it's a very clever book. I think the problem with why this is rated so low is it was a book of the month pick, right? That's how I got it. I think it's been exposed to audiences that is not its target audience. I think this is quite a niche book, looking for quite a niche audience, particularly quite, you know, a literary fiction, uh, you know, quite kind of highbrow audience is what it's looking for. And I think, you know, there are that audience does exist within Book of the Month, but a lot of Book of the Month readers are like 
thriller readers, romance readers, uh, you know, it kind of is more like mainstream for a wider general audience is the books they usually pick. So I feel like by being a book of the month pick and a lot of people probably discovered it through that, it perhaps isn't reaching the correct audience. And that is number one reason. Let's get the reasons out quickly. <laughs> number one reason why I think the rating is so low. Number two, because it is confusing at times. Number three, I guess that there really isn't any plot. There's not really an in-depth <laughs> plot that happens. This is a mild spoiler if anyone cares, but like you get told literally at the start, a black immortal in 1930s Los Angeles seeks to recover the memory of her past. That's kind of the reveal at the end. You know she's an immortal throughout the whole book. Like you know that, like you know that from page 10, do you know what I mean? But then that is also kind of the reveal at the end. So there's not, in terms of plot, nothing crazy happens, nothing unforeseen happens. So I can understand it's low rating. I'm gonna give it a three star. It wasn't great, wasn't bad. You know, I don't think it deserves to be the lowest rated book I've ever read when Kendall and Kylie Jenner's book is right there. <laughs> I think it has a lot of interesting stuff to say. I think people a, a, I don't think it's being pitched right. I think people are expecting something a bit more magical when I mean, it's really historical fiction. And I don't think it's reaching or has reached the correct audiences. But it was a very interesting read and kind of a book that made me stop and think for the first time in a while where I was like, huh, like this is very different than what I usually read. And whilst I'm struggling with aspects of it, I do appreciate it in the moment. I don't think it's gonna stick with me, however. I don't think it's given me any long lasting revelations, but it was still an interesting, insightful, okay book. It was fine, you know? So we're doing okay. I hate myself. I hate myself. I don't want to say anything too soon, but we've had a four star and a three star while reading the lowest rated books that I own. So that's not terrible. So yeah, let's go ahead and read our last book. She can't tell the last time I was happy. I literally can't tell you. I have 100 pages into which is steeped in gold, my lovely fairy loot edition. And guys, I don't have a clue what's going on. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. I have zilch, zero, zero reading comprehension of this book. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't understand and I feel really bad and I'm very sad. You know, this was last year, one of my most anticipated releases and I just, I just have zero reading comprehension of what's going on. So we've got these two perspectives. One has spent her life in prison, is kind of, the, believe she's the rightful heir to the throne. And the other is the princess equivalent, I guess. I can't remember what her official term is, but she's kind of working with the resistance who kind of want to unalive her mum, basically. And it, I, <laughs> I just, I really don't understand what is happening. You know, it's a case of there's so much world building, it, it is, it's too much. Like, we're constantly getting information and facts and, and, and information about the world and the politics and the way this works and like history. And it's just like, I can't take it all in. My biggest issue, and I have this with YA fantasy when I don't like how it's written, is I can't picture it. And that leads to me not taking anything of the book in. You know, some people when they read books don't picture it in their head at all. But if I can't picture a scene, if I can't figure, I constantly in this book, I can't figure out where we are, what we're doing, you know, the setting that we're in. If I can't picture that, I lose it. And I'm really struggling. I've barely been able to picture much of what's been happening. We kind of switch locations very quickly with, and I'm like, oh my God. And obviously it alternates perspective. So sometimes I'm forgetting what's been happening. I've read this all today, by the way. It's not like it's taken me a long time. I have barely taken any of this book in. I might have to DNF it. <laughs> I never DNF, you guys know I never DNF, but I feel like with this video, with me reading the lowest rated, and I've done well so far, and I've been able to see the positives, but <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. Like, what's the point of me reading this book if I I literally don't understand what's going on? You guys, you guys, I, I don't understand anything. I don't understand anything, and I feel terrible. I'm gonna read another 100 pages. We'll give it to page 200. If I get into it after that, I get into it. I mean, look, it's fucking, this fairy loot edition has got a bookmark ribbon. I don't want to DNF it. Look at her. I love bookmark ribbons. I'm so sad. 
But what is the point of me reading it if I have no clue what's going on, you know? Now, I will say, I think there needs to be a discussion around, and there has been discussions around uh, previously about, like, white reviewers saying, oh, I can't understand this book when it's, you know, written by an author of colour. This in particular has a lot of its roots in Jamaican culture, Jamaican mythology. But I've read a lot of reviews, actually, and what I've heard before, and I've read reviews, actually, since and I was supposed to read them at the end, but I went and looked on Goodreads and a lot of people are saying some of the stuff. We'll go and look together once I finish the book. A lot of people agree with me that they can't get into the book, it's difficult to understand what's going on, the world building's a lot, and it's reviewers from all different backgrounds. So I think perhaps it is a valid criticism of the book, but I want to put that asterisk in there. And I want to, you know, I always try to be careful and not be like, oh, I just don't understand it because I can't relate to it. That's never never something I really look for in books, being able to relate to something. But the world building is just, it's, it's the way it's written, it's so overwhelming. The world building information is not paced well. We're just constantly getting information and I can't take any of it in. So we're gonna give it another 100 pages. And if I don't like it, I'm gonna DNF, which kills, I mean, I've only DNF'd one other book this year, maybe. And I just, I just, if I've got zero reading comprehension, what's the point of me reading it? <laughs> but I feel bad and I hate DNFing in vlogs because I want to give you my full opinions on the book, but I guess that in itself is an opinion. <laughs> guys I've heard. I have given it like another 90 pages. I think I've gotten to page like 191 and I'm, I'm doing everything in. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Don't understand anything still. There was one chapter I really enjoyed actually. There was one chapter that was like, oh, I'm into it. We're getting into it. It without spoiling anything, it's where one of the girls, one of the perspectives was, she's not a queen. I keep calling her the queen. Doyen, the Doyen. Yeah, she kind of like confronted her, was having like a meeting with her. That was the one part I liked, but the rest. <laughs> we were set up to fail. We were set up to fail because I don't, really like dual perspective stories. I find, especially in YA, they're usually an excuse for neither of the perspectives being strong enough to hold a story. Yup, 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 yup. That's something I've really discovered this year, I would say, in my reading taste. I just don't like it. I'm like, you're obviously not girly enough to hold the story on your own, you know what I mean? There's so many characters on each of the separate perspective side. I don't know who any of them are. There's only like factions of power within the society and groups of people. Don't know who any of them are. I zero reading comprehension. So there's just like no point me reading this anymore because I just, I don't understand anything. Nothing makes sense to me anymore. In order to carry on, I would have to go back and reread the first 200 pages. Do you know what I mean? Which I don't really want to do. So yeah, I think if I were to finish this, it would be a one star, but I'm not feeling like finishing it. <laughs> I've only DNF'd one other book so far this year and I did rate that. I, I re like rated it as if I'd read it on Goodreads and I gave it one star. I'm not gonna do that with this because I don't wanna lower the rating of this book even more even though I didn't enjoy it. I think something needs to be said about the fact that out of the five lowest rated books on my TBR, my physical TBR, three are by women of color. Uh, so I think that needs to be addressed <laughs> and um, you know there's definitely like a bias there and I don't want to contribute to that even though I didn't like this book so I just don't feel right rating it low and bringing the rating down even more but I reckon if I had finished it it probably would have been a one star which I'm very sad about because like I said this was one of my most anticipated releases at the start of last year. It wasn't for me unfortunately and I have discovered this year that I do need to be more careful with the YA fantasy that I'm picking up because I haven't had a ton of success with it lately but let's quickly let's take a gander and have a look at some of the Goodreads reviews and see what people are saying whether they're saying Similar things to me. Let's look at what my friends have been saying. That's usually where I like to look. My friends is basically my friends on booktube and you guys. <laughs> this is my friends on Goodreads. So Elle giving up about 150 pages into it. I hate DNFing. Listen, me too. Slow, so desperate behind on following the world building. Yeah, DNF at 
26%, I assume. So we're all kind of DNFing around the same point. I think I got about 35% into this, which I feel like is like a reasonable amount to give it a go, you know? I didn't just DNF 100 pages. Like I really, I tried. <laughs> It wasn't a bad book, but it didn't work for me. Agreed. The magic system, although a bit confusing, is unique and interesting. Yeah, I could tell that it was interesting, but I just couldn't <laughs> grasp what was happening in terms of the magic system. I did like, that is a good point. I liked how the structure of government has women ruling it. That is a good point. I liked that. The two main POVs were too similar. Agreed. The pacing was off. So I feel like it's got a lot of similar reviews. Joel loved it though, which was great. Jessica gave it four stars. So it's not like everyone does like it so I'd still recommend giving it a go if you're interested in it but yeah wasn't for me <laughs> but in terms of the three lowest rated books that we read in this video Woods Always Watching probably like a 3.5 The Perishing a 3 maybe on reflection like a 2.75 but let's just call it a 3 because I don't think it deserves to be the lowest rated book I've ever read and a DNF but I'm pretty happy with that I'm glad to have read these books I found it really interesting reading these books and thinking you know do they deserve to be the lowest rated books on my TBR and I think I've read worse books than most of these books so I don't think they do but it was very interesting and and you know I can see reasons oh, I didn't give reasons to this one but I feel like I haven't <laughs> I'm not justified but yeah it was interesting thinking of reasons why people would dislike all of these even though there were elements that I enjoyed at least in these two perhaps not in this one <laughs> but I found it a very interesting reading experience so I would love to do this again one day and maybe in years and years to come I'm hopefully I'm still around <laughs> because I found it a very interesting exercise. So yeah, let me know. I'd love to know what some of the lowest rated books you've ever read are or the lowest rated books on your TBR. If you do know, go have a little look on whatever uh, reading tracking system you use. I would love to know. I think that's super interesting. I mean, Catherine House is still one of the lowest rated books I've ever read, but I think it's one of the most special books I've ever read. So it shows you that the rating doesn't mean everything. Although sometimes the rating can give you a clue. <laughs> Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you got into the end of it, comment. Comment the um, cloud with like the thunderstorms emoji. I really love that emoji. Comment that down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.